In a wide open world, you can go anywhere. But direct routes are better if you want to go somewhere. Routes on the city metro join and branch off and join again, each time giving you the opportunity to follow a new path and discover new things. Wouldn't it be great if information research worked the same way? Join us as we talk with researchers who aim to bring this model to the internet with information cartography. Eric Horvitz is known the world over for his expertise in artificial intelligence, but it was a poster hanging on an intern's wall that inspired this ACM fellow to join her quest for a better way to present information. So Daphne Shahaf was an intern with us, and, and uh, I, I got to know her as a really broad thinker, uh, someone who combines formal methods with large-scale, ill-defined problems. And she was looking at these information maps that have been done by hand of, of the sort of how a field evolves, what's the history of machine intelligence. And she said, I wonder if I can do this automatically. I wonder if I can create storylines automatically uh, to explain um, uh, hard, challenging, uh, development, uh, developing areas to people uh, in a clear way. The result is information cartography, a model that brings together big data, optimization, and visualization. Information cartography is about providing a, a guide, a map, to finding the information around big data problems and bringing humans into the loop where um, you know, massive amounts of information make it really hard for a human to really navigate that space. In one implementation, it starts with keywords, just like a web search. But there, the similarities end. In informational cartography, you can imagine putting a keyword that's of interest and getting a map back. Another way to get started could be, oh, here's one article that I'm reading today. Give me a map around this article. Another way to get started could be, uh, here's two endpoints, um, greed, debt crisis, and um, now migration crisis. Give me a path between them or give me a map around these. Uh, from the science perspective, you could say, here's the bibliography of the papers I've written so far, build me a map around them. And by the way, tell me papers I should have read or I should have cited that I haven't cited yet. And we focused on the ACM Digital Library and looked at reinforcement learning as an example, and we, we show a visualization of that in our, in our publication. Most importantly, metro maps don't have to be static. What's really exciting for me about Daphne's vision is the ability to do this kind of an interactive way for, many, for any query they might have. Take a starting grad student who wants to learn about machine learning, a field that you know, I'm passionate about. Um, that person probably needs to know about the basic fundamentals of machine learning. Now, if you take a senior grad student, then you know they already know that foundation. What they really want to know about is you know how is my PhD thesis being impacted by new publications out there and perhaps old ones that I don't know about and ones in different fields. Doctors Horvitz and Gestrin both believe that such an easy to navigate model goes beyond simple information management and could benefit humanity in real and profound ways. There's the prospect of using these tools to get into the minds of other people, to, to get other perspectives on news stories. And the idea is, can we come up with technologies? Can we harness computer science? Can we harness optimization, information retrieval, uh, and uh, visualization to, to, to combat the prospect that we're getting only tiny keyhole views uh, of a situation. And we've only scratched the surface of the possibilities here. If we can do this well, uh, we can have you know, a more informed world, faster scientific discoveries, you can have you know, better political discourse. It's an endless opportunity. Find out more in this month's Communications of the ACM in the contributed article, Information Cartography.